The most neglected part of the startup business model is channel strategy, but it literally determines whether you'll sink or swim. On, on like the business model canvas, it sometimes is it's empty or it has like one or two little lines in it, but that, that itty bitty bitty box there determines the when, the what, the how of actually getting in front of customers. So you neglect it at your peril. But today we're gonna help you with a, a guide to startup channel strategy. So let's do this. What is up? And welcome to Startup Shop Talk, our weekly live show entirely about startups and innovation from idea all the way to product market fit. My name is Josh David Miller, and I'm here every single Friday morning with my friend and co-host, Dan Cassis Murray. Dan, what up, folks? good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I am exceedingly well, if you can't tell. I can tell, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So I... I, I like let's get right into this because it's like a meaty thing. I know you and I are in soapbox territory at, at the moment, but Indeed. I think I feel like I feel like we have to earn the right to get on our soapbox. Okay, because I'm good because with that. I don't think I don't think everybody I don't think everybody's bought in yet to this idea of like why channels are important. They're just like okay, like it's an app, so I'm going to reach them through the you know through the the Play Store and the App Store, right? Like I mean that's my that's my that's my channel. I'm just going right. to get them through the app. Um, so let's build up to that. So let's start like way back and Dan, like tell us about channels. Like what the heck are, what the heck are channels? Let's just start there. Let's start with what are channels? Okay. So channels are two things. Basically they're the link that puts you in touch with your customers. Right. And so we have, we talked about before with the business model canvas, there was the value proposition, which is the middle of the canvas. Right. And so that's basically the thing around which everything revolves in the business is the value proposition. Right. And then the customers with out without whom there is no business are on the other side and when we think about channels it's really well how do we bridge that that divide between our value proposition and our customers that's that's what it all is right and right. to your point josh like we're thinking about like well why is it why is it overlooked um it's because it's a seemingly innocuous box that stands in the way of us selling our <laughs> blockbuster thing right um right <laughs> and and it's and it's it's so easy to overlook mostly because there there's an entire industry industries actually devoted to figuring that little block out just like there's entire industries that are devoted to figuring out the left hand side of the canvas there's one for this one but see here's the thing for me anyways um if i don't know how to use those professional services of like marketers strategists that kind of stuff then i'm basically like throwing away my money how do i know this i have done it <laughs> <laughs> i've thrown a lot of money away and it's not the marketer's fault it's my fault for not knowing any better um so the thing about when when you're getting in front of people that are that are marketers or they're marketing strategists or even if they're just tactical folks that know a channel really really well um you still have to tell them like what the deal is you have to tell them who the customer is what their affinities are what their problem is what they like what their emotions are all that stuff because it's garbage in garbage out right like the more right. that you can tell those folks like give them a, a an out a, a, you know like a the, the 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 more accurate picture you can give them the better your results are going to be right because marketers are not mind readers um nor should they be um right. it's not their job to take your company and sell it for you that's your job as the founder as the entrepreneur right okay that's that's a little bit of little soapboxy okay so bring it back in the channel block simply is that bridge between your value proposition and your customers, right? Okay. Now, when we start looking into this, we say, okay, well, there's how do we how do we think about channels then? Well, we know it's a bridge. Okay. Well, what kind of bridge is it? Well, there, like let, let's categorize this in terms of two main bridges. The first bridge, I like to think, is the easier easier of the two. It's it's the logistical bridge. And it's basically like, oh, how do I get whatever my thing is over to my customer? Is it online? Is it through the mail? Is it through electronics media? Is it, um, you know, uh, you know, you come into a brick and mortar, you buy something there and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's pure logistics. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's pretty concrete and it's easy to to kind of figure out. Now, the second divider or the second category in that channels box is basically communications, not to be conflated with marketing. Marketing is only one type of communication. That's, that's generally, you know, 
inside out, like from the inside to the outside, out to the to the customer base. That that's communication. That's marketing, right? But I'm talking about back and forth, two way communication between you and the customer. And so those two things, the the logistical ones and the communications channels, are what we need to figure out as founders. Now, arguably, I would say that the communication thing is probably the more important of the two in terms of how to get it right. The because mostly because I feel like there's so many different options. There's so many mm. different ways to talk with customers. I mean, it's it's simultaneously awful and great. Right. Um, awful because there's so many options and it's hard to focus, but great because there's usually a wrench for every nut. Right. <laughs> there's 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 a way there's a technique. Whoever your customer is, there's a there's a good way to get in front of them. OK, so, um, yeah, so that's the channel thing. Now, let's I, we're going to talk a little bit more about breaking those categories down a little further um, in terms of like. Um, how, how do, okay, so maybe maybe we get it at this point, right? We're, we're like, okay, I get it, I get it. It's a bridge and it's a list of logistical bridge and it's a communications bridge, but now what? So when you say, so, okay, wait, so when, so when you say, when you say it's a bridge, um, yeah. you're literally talking about like customers over there, wherever they are. And that's why you're talking about like, oh, you gotta know who your customer is because you gotta figure out who the hell you're talking to before right. you can talk to them because they are in different places. They don't all hang out in the same in the same yeah. space, right? Like yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm on Twitter, right? I'm not on Pinterest, but <laughs> right. But there are, there's an audience on, on Pinterest. If you're, no, I'm if feeling you're like a maker. That, I'm feeling a little right? guilty that I'm on Pinterest now. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being on Pinterest. I'm I know, just I'm saying just like, I'm, on, I'm <laughs> so, right. But so you see, you have to know your audience. Okay. So um, the channel then is, is, is how I get my message from where I am to where where they are, whether that's in person, like way back in the day, that was direct mail, right? You send people a little postcard, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, or shared mail or whatever, um, you know. And but it's also it's it's ads, it's social media, it's um, it's 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 text messaging, it's conventions, it's speaking, it's podcasts, it's YouTube, it's. Right. So there's all these different ways of getting an audience. There's forums and, and uh, right. I mean, there's just, it's all the different, those are all, all channels. Right. And so yeah. you have this huge variety of, of channels. Um, so, okay, great. So draw, draw a distinction then between like what you described the business model canvas a second ago. And we had like the right in the middle of the canvas. Um, we've got a, uh, the, the value proposition. And then yeah. all the way to the side, we've got the customer. And then you have those two boxes connected to them, right? So we have the, the channels, which we want to talk about here. And then you have relationships. And those are both, in a sense, bridges, right? Or am I, or is that wrong? Like what draw a no. distinction between those two boxes? You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Um, what I like to focus on is the channels because once I understand the channel, the medium through which I do communicate with the customer, then the relationship mm -hmm. becomes a little more clear. And so it is kind of a if A, then B type thing, at least for me. Um, but the relationship piece is something that is formed once you have that channel established, right? So right. if I think of like the channels is basically like the medium through which I communicate, that's that's pretty much Bottom line, that's what it is. The relationship is what that communication actually looks like. Is it transactional in nature? Is it regular in nature? Is it lifetime thing by nature? That kind of right. stuff. Right. Is it automated versus like, do you get like a full concierge helping you out? Right. Like it, it's, it's yeah. different. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay, and cool. mostly, and mostly that's okay. Well, what are the motivations for the relationship at that point? Is it an acquisition thing? Is it a, is it a, um, like a, uh, is it an engagement thing? Is it a retention thing? You know, that those kind of things. Hmm. Does this feel a rem little reminiscent of our pirate metrics? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe it does. Hmm. So, maybe so, so maybe, so maybe the together. channel box is like the vessel and the relationship is what actually occurs in that vessel. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, we'll set, we'll set relationships aside for, for today. And well, today we'll just, we'll just focus on channels then. Cool. 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 Okay. So, all right. So 
let's think about so, channels here. Like, all right. Yeah. So we already we already talked about we already talked about the logistics piece. We talked about the communications piece. But what's next? Like, how do they work? Yeah. So there are so many. There's so many channels, right? That, that I mean, there's probably there's hundreds, right, of channels yeah. that we could come up with. And so it's like, so I think it can be difficult sometimes to even think about it. And uh, like, to, how do we even come up with what our channel, like what channels we're even talking about? Like, how, like oh my goodness, right? I, I, I mean, we're going to focus on a handful of them, but there's so many, like, how do we get there? So uh, there's, there's a couple of ways that I think about channels um, really tactically. And so there's like two big questions that I ask when it comes to channels. And this will help you ideate around channels. So one is it is it a direct channel versus an indirect channel. So we talked about this a little bit on our business model canvas show uh, a few a few weeks back. So if you if you want that, we'll put that down in the in the in the description. You can you can click that, watch a full show on the business model canvas. But um, direct or indirect? This is like a direct channel is one where I am talking right to my customer, right, right to them. Whereas an indirect channel is one where there's a middleman, right? There's like something in between. So um, if you're uh, if I have a like a salesperson and they're out selling. That's a direct channel. But if I am selling through a store, that's indirect. I don't get to contact my customer. Somebody else is talking to my customer instead of me, right? So you have direct versus indirect. And then kind of similarly to that, but it is a different question, is whether it is a partner channel, like a channel partner, or whether you own the channel. So using like, um, we could do a similar kind of example as we just did. So that's the difference between like selling on Amazon versus selling on your website. So if I'm selling on my website, I am owning that channel. But so if I'm selling on, so that's direct. So that it's direct, and it is it is owned, right? Okay. Good. Whereas if I, but as whereas if I sell on Amazon, it is both it is both indirect, um, and it's a partner channel because they're mm -hmm. the ones they're the ones owning that relationship. But they are also both e-commerce, right? So they 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 have a lot in in common there. So I sense um, I sense a matrix coming up here. It is exactly, and I um you you uh, I don't I don't have one right in front of me to, to show you guys. Maybe I'll put a maybe I'll put one down in the description. But like the you have uh yeah uh, just a, a two by two right, and so you have certain ones that are owned and direct. And I think uh, partner channels that are direct are really rare. So that like because partner mm -hmm. and direct is kind of kind of weird. But um but otherwise the other three are pretty pretty robust. So like um, owned and direct might be like a Salesforce. That's the one I mentioned before. We just talked about the website owned and direct. Um, owned and indirect could be a, a retail store that you own and operate. So a shop so within you, a shop? It could be, or it, yeah, a shop in a shop is a great example, or it could be like we have, um, uh, let's say we own a retail store and we manufacture the good and we sell it in our own retail store. So, right. So we are at that point still one level removed. Kind um, of like, think about, like, would it, would it, Oh, so we we make a product and we give it to PetSmart, and PetSmart sells our product. Is that that would be the idea? that would be partnered? So th think about PetSmart is the one making the product. So yeah. like let's say it's a store brand, they manufacture it themselves, right? It's a generic brand that they manufacture it and they sell it in their own stores. So it's still owned, but because they own the store, but it's indirect because it's not tied back to the product team at all. Yeah. It's okay. entirely delegated to something else within the broader org, right? So we still control it. Like we can put, we can uh, put, bring a message from on high that says how you have to communicate and how you have to place in a store. We can do all that, but like, it's still, it's still somebody else. I'm still got it behind them, right? Okay. So um, I just want to pause right here and say that it seems like if, if at some point I want to expand my thinking about the direct and owned and indirect versus not owned and everything in between, instead of, like what I could do is I could just go about my day and every business that I interact with, I could probably sit there and just kind of point it out as I, as I go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's important to think about it this way because it tells you a lot, right? Mm. It tells you a lot about what you can do. So like the example I said very sarcastically in the opening um, of the show was that oftentimes like particularly it's SAS. I'm sure you've seen this, Dan, where like somebody will put on a business model canvas because it's a SaaS or just, or like, let's say a mobile app. It's even better. So it'll be a mobile app. And so under channels, the channel box in a business model canvas, it'll say app store. Yeah. And you're like, and that's it. Right. Cause it's like, like yeah. a no brainer, right? Like, yeah. Right. It's like a no brainer. And it's not wrong. You, right. It, that is one of your channels. Right. Like, I, it, yeah. It legit is. But if that's your only channel, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. I, right. 
part part of this problem i think is because that box is so damn small okay fine whatever but it's it. It almost by default causes us to think high level about the whole thing but right but right. still we size with importance there is a lot of depth there that yeah. i feel we should be we, we should be plumbing as as founders totally totally and like and so if you and if you if you think about it in these terms, if you think about it as like direct versus indirect, if you think about it as channel partner versus owned, it actually tells you a lot about what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing, what that translates to. So like it is right that a, a channel for a mobile app is the app store or the, the Google Play store, right? That's true. But because it is not owned and because it is indirect, there's a lot that you can't control, which means the only way that customers are going to even discover you through something like that is through the factors that that has. So mm. then you start thinking, okay, so how does something get in front of it in the store? Yes, there are ads and like, okay, so that's a thing. So, and that's another, it's a channel within a channel, right? You could do ads inside the app store, but like that's a thing. But then also you think about, well, so there's an algorithm here and it like recommends it recommends these the products or recommends apps to people and it does that based on on reviews does that based on popularity it does that based probably on some customization some individualization so you're like okay so i have to hack all that stuff for this channel to be successful and it's like if i'm just a new app starting out and i throw it on the app store i'm gonna get buried in the bottom of this list and this channel is literally gonna be no, do nothing for me unless i can give somebody a direct link to click it and they open it up in the app store or they know to search for it right and so right yeah because i've been there not with apps right. per se, but like that whole thing, like getting lost. I've been, in the, I've been there with apps. <laughs> getting lost in the sea of like the the greater thing. I mean, that's that's really discouraging. Right, right, right. And so, like and in um, that case, of course, then what I'm doing is I'm I'm like saying, well, okay, well, I got to do something better here because this isn't going to work. So what do I do? And that's when, okay, right? Yes. That, that that's what that's yes. when I'm like I'm discouraged. Yes. My startup's about to die because I ran out of gas, basically, and and I'm like I don't want this to happen, but this isn't working. So now what? And that, mm -hmm. not too late, but that mm -hmm. is when you know founders hit a proverbial channel bottom. And need to start looking beyond what what you know that high level answer is, because you really don't want your ship to sink to the bottom of the channel. No, no, you don't. Yeah, that would be yeah. terrible. It would be terrible. Um, but it's interesting, actually, about about all we're talking you about. Because you got whole of... whole crates of hopes and dreams that would be dashed against the rocks on the way down. <laughs> we don't really? want that. Those we are don't precious want goods. All. Yeah, I mean, there are tidal forces at play here, and like it's a it's a whole thing, um, uh, you know. Like this is I I don't know. At some point, these 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 all become uh, jetty mind tricks. Is that that pun is probably a step too far? I apologize to the viewers for that pun. Um, I love okay. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna in shame move on. Um, let's sail on. Let's sail. <laughs> Um, okay, so so let's so let's talk about now. Like, th so that's one one way to think about things is like direct versus indirect and channel partner versus owned. And we actually just hinted at something that was kind of interesting when we were talking about this idea of that because you're unknown on the app store, you have to have some other way of getting in front of them. But they're still going to go through the app store to get your thing. Why? That's because you have to think about channels as more than just sales channels. Dude, I'm gonna have to do it. Channels are a spectrum. I'm going to okay. have to do it. Let's break it down. Okay. Let's break it so, down with piracy. Let's break. Yeah. So ex with pirate, we're going back to the sea metaphor. I apologize. It's unavoidable here. But we're talking it. pirate metrics. Yeah. Let's talk, talk about that. We're gonna do it. <laughs> we talk about them on most shows because it's it's like it is the just the, the way of describing any business. And it's through five metrics. Or, or six, if you depending on on whether or not you 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 want to include it, which I think we will here. So let's do six metrics. So there's awareness, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. So six letters: A A A R R R. Right. Thus, why it's called pirate metrics because R. <laughs> Thank you. R. All right. So pirate metrics. Um, a A A R R R. And that describes roughly speaking a process, but also an ecosystem of a product or or a business. So you have. Um, 
like when we talk, we have, that they become aware of your product, then they have to get into your ecosystem. That's they have to you have to acquire them, right? And then once they're acquired in the ecosystem, you have to deliver value to them to keep them in the ecosystem. So you activate them, like, oh, okay, yes, I want this, right? And then you have to get revenue out of them, and then you want them to stay with you long term, so you can keep getting revenue from them. So they have to that's retention, and then you want them hopefully to send more people your way. That's referrals, right? So all awareness all the way through referrals, like this big ecosystem. Any business in the world, from from Walmart to your startup, can all be described. In, the, in those five terms, the precise definition differs from business to business, but any business can be defined using those five or six little 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 metrics, little buckets there, right? Okay, so I have so, a question real quick. Yes. Um, so as we're thinking about channels, like channels aren't just like a one and done kind of thing. It's, it's right. understanding, okay, what's the acquisition channel? What's mm -hmm. the engagement channel? What's the retention channel? Right. What's all those things, right? Right. And at each stage along the process, at each stage in that process, that you have a channel or probably multiple channels that you're using at any one point in time. And each of those channels can be direct versus indirect. They can be owned mm. versus partners. So you can have a direct, you know, so like when you're on social media, that's like, I mean, in a sense it's direct, but it's really, if you're doing ads at all, it's really not right. And so, um, so you have to start thinking about things in that way. So let's, let's kind of break that, break it down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. So when we're talking about channels, we often use uh, five, bucket that a vive category bucket that roughly maps onto pirate metrics but i'm gonna use this one because it's what you're gonna find if you google around so we have awareness so the first thing is like how do what channels can you use to get awareness around your product or around your service or in your business and so that's how, how how are customers even finding out that you a thing right so we have awareness channels um, and that can be, you know, that can be your website. It can be your social media presence. You might post videos on YouTube, right? Whatever it is, I have to become aware that you are thing, you're a thing, your product's a thing. Could be brand marketing on a billboard, whole wide way of things. But the point is getting them aware that you're a thing. Second, evaluation. So customers are, are going to then do some research because they want to find out if what you're offering is a good fit for their needs. So they're going to do some some level of research, even if that's entirely on your website. That's a channel, by the way. They're doing some kind of research to evaluate that fit, right? So you have a, a evaluation channels. So website is a great example of that. Another form of evaluation channels. If you're in the B two B SaaS space, really common ones are like those SaaS comparison uh, sites, or like this versus that, and you know they show rankings for things like um, uh, I think Captera is one. There's a, there's a, a, a SourceForge is another one. There's a lot of those out there. Those are just strictly evaluation channels. But regardless, social media is an evaluation channel. Amazon reviews are an evaluation channel. There's lots of evaluation channels out there. Okay, so we have awareness evaluation. Now they've evaluated it. It seems like a good fit. So they move into the sales part of the process. So there are sales channels. And that's literally how do they make the purchase? That could be the app store in the example we talked about before. It could be in a, inside of a physical store, e-commerce store. It could be from your website. It could be in person. doesn't matter. Sales channels. Those are the obvious ones. Then you have delivery channels. So when we talk about a business, right, we talk about getting the value that we're creating to the customer's hands. That was what Dan, you were talking before about the bridge. Right. So that's a delivery channel. You know, how does the product actually get into the customer's hands? So a delivery channel could be like uh, video and through YouTube. That's how our value delivery channel for this little nonprofit show we run here. But <laughs> um, like, that's how we, we deliver this value through for, through YouTube. And then lastly, so we have awareness, evaluation, sales, delivery and the final support support channels. So these are often neglected, too, until you get further along. And this is how do you reach your customers or how do they reach you? after the sale is done so post sale how do you guys get like how do you how do you get together what does the support process look look like after the sale is and that's a really important channel because it has a really big impact on referral and retention so it's really important so you want to think about those channels at all five phases and you want to think about whether you own them and whether they're direct or indirect that's a lot it is, you know, it is a lot. And that's why, like I say, it, you know, this box is so small. You're right. The box is so small. And oftentimes people put like one thing down there because it's like they don't think about there's this really broad spectrum of channels. You want to go. This is how if you just go through this process, then ask yourself those two questions. You're going to come up with a buttload of channel hypotheses that then yeah. experiments that you have to test, which uh, is uh, something we'll actually get to uh, next. I think let's talk about that. Actually, let's 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 talk about how we use these. Right. So like. Um, starting, starting Dan with like an early stage startup, right? How does an early stage startup look at channels? Like, what does that look like? Okay. This is good. 
Um, because as a founder, you're like, okay, I, I have enough to think about. Like, how am I actually going to make sense heads or tails of this? And and usually the default answer when overwhelm is comes in is an overuse of Occam's razor, in my opinion, which is, oh, I'm just going to whatever it is, right? Like, or, you know, sitting around like the conference room table saying, hey, we should try this or we should try that or that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the by default, like what I have experienced, like sitting by myself, sitting with other founders, um, that kind of stuff. But, but, you know, uh, like two weeks ago, we talked about growth hacking, right? And that process, that three-step process that we were going to use to find where we were actually going to get traction. And for me, it's, I can use that three-step process to figure out like which channels are actually going to work at each of those stages. Now, there's no doubt about it. Like building a deliberate funnel using, using all of this, like that's where we should be. But is it where we're going to be like when we first start out? No. I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, it's something to be aware of. Absolutely. Especially if we start to get to be revenue and then, you know, post revenue and all that other kind of stuff. And in the very beginning, you know, we're just, we're just looking for, uh, Hey, I have a thing. I want to sell my thing. I want people to buy my thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. Right. So I like to think about understanding and building out the channel block. Um, it's sort of like, I call it the snowball method, which is basically you start with a small operation you win success there and then you make it a, a layer bigger and then you win success there and then you and then you win a layer bigger. So how do we do that? Well, in, in startup land, basically for me, it's it's first things first. I got to figure out what channel is going to help me get the right message to the right people. That's it. That's it. In the very beginning, I just need to get traction, right? Now, once I figure that out and I have like, you made perfect, that sound awfully simple. Just saying. Well, it kind of is. Saying. It's just a lot of work to get there. It's simple, but not easy. How about that? There we go. All right. Simple, but not easy. I'm you good with that? I buy it. I buy right, it. Coo, coo, coo. So yeah, it's simple, but not easy, right? Like it does take work and it is a pain in the ass, but I tell you something and well, okay. So I'm going to share my own experience. Um, having a product, a piece of content or a thing that just, you push it over the wall and it just flops over. That feels one way. When you have a thing and you announce it and people can't get enough of it and they just climb over each other to get it, that feels another way. And here's what <laughs> I've noticed. When I do the simple but not easy thing, I enhance my chances of getting this done methodically with predictability and it, it feels so good because you know i got a whole other canvas to worry about right I, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say something maybe a little dangerous i'm gonna opine here and this oh is my. based on my own yeah right like this is based on my own experience everybody and that gets is the reaction weird. shot once okay so when i get the channel mix right from the gate i don't have to concentrate so hard on marketing later I, that's, that's pretty much sacrilege, right? Cause you, you can always be better at marketing. <laughs> right. But, but, but I get what you're saying because you, you aren't trying to get the customers to you. You went where the customers already were. Yes. Yes. And, oh, by the way, they like what I have to offer and they start becoming my marketing machine for me right. after a while. So right. let's look at like YouTube, Spotify, any of those other like plat like content platform algorithms. How do they work? Well, in general, they work there. It's a two part algorithm, right? It like the first part is like, Hey, do you have the SEO that can actually attract people via search? And then the second is, well, that's great in terms of getting people in front of like, Hey, I want to search about this widget. Let me find a video about this widget. But then that whole little, like after you're done with that, all those little recommended videos that, that happen or those recommended podcasts or something like that, those happen after you start actually engaging with customers there, right? So somebody like watches your videos or they listen to your podcast or they engage with your content and, you know, like how long they engage for and do that, you know, what, what, what kind of regular basis and all that kind of stuff. Then you get that recommendation part, right? And so it's it's an attraction, but then also a uh, engagement thing. So it's a two-part algorithm. 
So if I get this one right, especially for those platforms, then I can get this other one right, provided that my content is engaging. And if I've done my, my research and I've interviewed people and I know exactly how they're feeling and I know what the problems are, then all that stuff hangs together. And okay, so that's great because while I'm growing, I'm not putting so much time, money, and effort into brainstorming about which channels. Here's the mm. thing that happens. This legit happens pretty much every time. We're six months in. We've got a thing. It's got a couple of sales. It's great. But you know what? Payroll's coming up, and that's a bitch. Payroll was one of my most terrible events that happened every two weeks. It was like signing up to get kicked in the gym. <laughs> it was unavoidable, right? And it's not because I don't like taking care of people. It's because it's so stressful, right? It's like, man, I got to come up with this amount of money on a regular basis, and I don't have the sales to support it. So what's the next thing? There's only two ways to make profits, and that's to cut costs or to increase revenues or both, right? And so, of course, you're like, okay, well, we did the cost thing. Now, how can we actually increase revenues? Well, we need to get more people in. Duh, right? That's okay. And then and then what do we do? Well, then we start thinking about, well, we should do a Facebook ad or we should do a Google ad or we just need people to come in. So let's, let's set up a partnership with this big box store and that. Only what we're not remembering is that setting up a partnership with that big box store, that's going to take some social proof. Facebook ads, you have to be pretty good at targeting people. You got to know exactly who the hell you're wanting to talk to. Same thing with Google ads, only it's more of a text-based thing, right? Like you have to like understand like how people actually search for things and what search terms they actually use in order to be effective. And oh, by the way, at the end of the day, Google only rewards you for um, how well you use their tool. Whether or not people buy, they don't care, right? They just want people to click on ads. Okay, so- So true. Right? So the idea, like I was all big and bad with a 7% conversion rate. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. Google's just like telling me how good I am at spending my own money with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. So those conference room table discussions, they suck. I hate them. And I don't know anybody else that really likes them. And the reason why is because we're all under pressure to come up with this mechanism that's going to magically grow sales. But this is all unavoid or this is all avoidable if we put in the time and the effort up front to do the diligent work, to do the simple but not easy thing, because later we thank ourselves because we do have people not only like finding and discovering and engaging with our stuff, but then also telling each other about it. And that is a beautiful thing. Because right. marketing is stressful. And oh, by the way, when you go and you pay somebody to do it, they're going to take your money too. And they're going to do exactly what you ask them to. That's their job. Their job is not to figure out what your customer likes or if they like Cheerios in the morning with 2% milk instead of whole milk. That's not their job. That's your job. And, you know, uh, throwing money at the yeah. problem is not going to solve it. Like the founder has to solve it. So, Soapbox, right. I'm going to decide. <laughs> Okay. No, 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 no. Stay up on that soapbox. I'm going to ask oh. you some more. All right. So, okay. So we talked about early stage startups and, and, and we opened the show by asking or by telling people, but making this really big, bold claim that you neglect channels to the detriment of your startup. Right. And I think you're talking about some of the reasons in an early stage startup, why that is that one is like, you need to learn about your customers. And the way mm -hmm. to do that is to go where they are. And if you don't have your channels defined, you can't go where they are. So you're just never going to get a right product in the first place because you, you don't, you're not talking to the people. And, and it's always going to feel right. weird. It's just, it's, it's going to be gonna, like this right. pair of shoes that you buy and like they, they fit, but they kind of don't fit. So you're always right. wondering what would it be like if I had a pair of shoes that actually fit? Sorry, go ahead. Exactly. No, 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 no. It's a good analogy. Okay. So then, then you said um, even, even further than that, like if you don't, if you do this work in advance of going where your customers are, finding your customers and understanding them, that you also are taking a lot of the work that's going to take you longer and cost more money in the future when you're also trying to worry about the expenses of running a business, right? Yeah. And it's going to, and, and it can take all of that and lessen that ease out or maybe even eliminate it because you found out where your customers are and you did not tell them what you think that they want and why they should buy it but you asked them what kind of shoes that they want and then crowdsource this amazing shoe that fits them like a glove wait pretty fits much them like damn it wrong like appendage for that but i know but the, uh, it just is a wrong analogy okay so that's early stage starters but i want to keep i want to keep delivering on this okay Deliver. so so we said that 
you know, you, you neglect channels at your peril, but it's not just early stage startups. It's also the later stage startups, right? Those that are, that are getting closer to product market fit, or maybe you're at product market fit where all they have left to do is grow. Now, two weeks ago, we Wait a minute, I just about... got to say one thing. I just got to say one yes. thing to this is that if you're looking at this and you're like, oh man, that's like a lot of work and I have to keep doing this, this hard work over and over and over again, how am I actually going to get a startup together? And the idea is that, well, okay, maybe in the beginning it's hard work, but the more you practice this, the easier it does get, right? The shoes, they sure. soften up and they break in and all that kind of stuff, right? Like, so here, right. like my experience is like, once I understand this, I can start practicing it deliberately, but then eventually it's intuitive. Right. And also like it's iterative and the loops get smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So it does right? get so easier. It's this big lift. And then when you, and then you learn things from it and then you go, and then it's still a big lift. Then eventually it's a large lift. And then eventually they're much smaller lifts because you're going through like this iterative process and the loops get smaller. Mm -hmm. So I think it, yeah, right. So, so yeah, that's, and, that's, and a good, that's a good point. When you have that's employees and you're starting to bake this into your culture, people will do it automatically then at that point as well. I mean, that's, that's, that's still a whole right. other process, change management and HR and culture building and all that kind of stuff. But and that's a topic <laughs> for another said, show. <laughs> right. And nobody said entrepreneurship was easy. Right. Um, right. But, but that's the good news to this whole thing. If you get it, if, if you get it, if you start to practice in the very beginning, it actually becomes second nature, which is what mm -hmm. we want. All right. So anyways, so tell us yeah, more no, no. about what this looks no, no, like. No, no. So I, you're going to tell us, man. You're going to tell us. Tell So we, two weeks ago, we talked about, we talked about growth hacking, right? Yeah. And really, yeah, yeah. as I, as, as we were talking about, growth hacking was a channel strategy, mm -hmm. right? Much. That's all it really was. It was so, a trick. It was a trick. It's, it's a, it was one weird trick to to grow your startup. Um, Marketers so we hate talked, us because of this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a three step process for growth hacking a startup, and it was all based on channels. So if you do, if you neglect that box early on, you're also hurting your ability to growth hack your startup. So let's talk about that. So. Can you recap for us, Dan? What is our three-step process for growth hacking? Totally, yeah. So the three-step process to growth hacking was basically one, uh, trying to figure out which channels you can actually get traction in, um, basically doing an entire channel brainstorm. It's just a thought exercise. And then the second piece was, so, you know, we put up that matrix where it was sort of like, okay, well, how do I know which channels to actually test? And the idea is that we don't have the bandwidth or the resources to test all of those channels all at once. So we want to pick small batches, right? Maybe six, maybe seven, maybe four, just depending on like what we can actually do. It's basically finding the right channel at the right time with the right capability, right? And then we go and we test those. And once we're done testing them, which is basically making, you know, putting an ad out there, putting a blog post, taking a video out there and seeing, hey, do I get traction on this? Yes or no, I'm, I'm you know, creating an experiment there. The last, the, and then the third step is basically saying, okay, well, where I'm successful, I'm gonna continue to build on that. So step one is brainstorm all the channels. Step two is test them in small batches. And step three is profit. I'm just kidding. Step three is thinking, <laughs> you know, which, which channel is actually working. And then what you can do, then you drill in to how, how do I optimize this channel? How do I get more out of it? Right. Um, and then you do that until you grow and you need to look for another channel. And then you repeat that entire process again and again. Right. Right. So the idea here is that but if you can discover your, your, your channels, you're really finding out where your customers are. And then growth hacking is building on that to say, okay, now we have all these channels where we know customers are. So those are all available to us. And then we say, okay, well, what are what are the most efficient channels? Right? That was your that was your step two. Is like we figure out like which ones can we actually make a play in without a massive effort? Because the whole point of growth hacking is to find rapid growth quickly with a low effort, right? Yeah. So then we said, like, which ones can we make our play? And then we find, all right, we think this one's right. This is, you know, a social media influencer strategy, right? That's our thing. And, and so then we we make our play there. We do a little small experiment, see how it goes. And then we iterate, right? And we keep, and keep building on that. And if it didn't work, then we pivot to a different channel and kind of kind of do that. So growth hacking, like the, the common way, the way that everybody wants to grow their startup, right? The way that you leverage no cash or limited cash to big win, 
is entirely based on getting the channel box right. Couldn't agree more. And yo, it feels so good. Breaking even on the first day, it's possible. Not probable, but possible. I've done it. And I've done it, let's see, I've done it twice. And it's good. It's just good. And it's and I haven't done it because I'm a I'm a genius or I'm a startup like King Midas or anything like that. It's because I did the thing, right? I said I followed some. Because you put in the work. I put in the work, right? So you can too. Everybody can. Everybody can. Um, and it feels great. It's it's a good feeling. Ten out of ten would recommend that feeling. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Four out of five startup founders. Uh, oh, so that's no, that's 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 fan, that's fantastic, is it right? You, you you put in the work, and it doesn't mean you're going to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. But this is like you're trying to scale the side of a building, and this is the ladder. Mm -hmm. And if you follow this process right, the rungs are just far enough apart that you can make your steps, right? Yeah. And we can't promise you that there's anything at the top of the at the top of the ladder when you get to the top. We can't promise there's anything up there. But this is how you get up there. You say you want to go there. This is how you get there. Right. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, every step of the way, like you get a little closer to the top. Right. And then you can start seeing, is there, there, there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious, I'm curious from, from everybody watching from your viewers, um, you know, what are, are there any channels you're really curious about? Like, what is your strategy? What are your favorite channels? What channels do you plan with right now? I want to hear war stories from the trenches. Let us know down in the comments uh, about it. And and also, you know, if, if you found this at all helpful, definitely smash that like button. Give us a little subscribe. Flick the little bell. Let us know that you want to do that. We are here every single Friday, 11 a.m. And so we'll be back next week, April 1st, 11 a.m. to talk more. In the meantime, if people cannot get enough of Dan Cassis Murray, where can they find him on the Internet? Well, you can go to the lean Uh, there's a shiny new landing page there. Uh, or you can, I've Google, seen it. It's pretty. Thanks. Uh, or you can Google Dan Casas Murray that it's a unique name. So it, so it pops up everywhere, like embarrassingly so, but it's efficient. So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? If people can't get all of your, JDM, all of your mug shots are there. And <laughs> <laughs> depending on which service you're using. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was how I ended up with uh being called josh david miller was I, I i was trying to find something that would rank and so i would i it's, it was a, it was a couple of years it took me to like find something that i could rank in so if you search josh david miller i'm the most common search result there. I'm, 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 I'm what comes up um but it used to be for a while i was fighting this guy in florida because of course um who on google you, images you show, florida man and you I won fought, and you're telling about it I live to tell about Florida man. The so Florida man was showing up with a mugshot in Google Images. I had to fight that for a little while. Uh, so okay. so you, you can find me anywhere on the internet just by hitting up uh, jdm.bio. That's my that's my address. You can find me on all the social channels there. And if you want a weekly tip uh, tool or, or mindset shift on startups and innovation, you you can you can uh, sign up for my weekly newsletter right to your inbox. So that's it. I think I think we're good to go. I think so too. Thanks folks for right. joining us. Hope you got something awesome. out, of, out of the discussion today and we're glad to see you. All right. Awesome. I will, I will see you around Dan and, and see everybody else on the internet. See you guys. Bye.